Hello, my name is Mahan Mathur, and this is the second video in our Introduction to Radiology video series. In this video, we'll be covering computed tomography, or CT imaging. And the big objective to get out of this is to recognize the significance of the Hounsfield unit on CT scans. And we'll go about doing this by looking briefly into the historical context of CT imaging. We'll talk about a basic orientation to CT images, and then we'll cover the Hounsfield unit and cover important concepts of window level and window width. Conventional radiography is wonderful, however, it has some limitations, first of which arises from this concept that you're basically trying to impose a 3D subject onto a 2D plane. Many objects will overlap each other, you won't be able to tell them apart on conventional radiography. And there's also limited differentiation of different densities. We can really only differentiate five basic densities on conventional radiography, where things like water and soft tissue actually look the same, so you cannot differentiate them apart. And if you want to do an experiment just to kind of demonstrate that concept to yourself, if you were to take your finger and use a light source uh, above it, for example, the light source from your iPhone, and cast the shadow of your finger onto a table, it's very easy to see your finger. However, if you place another finger right next to it, both those fingers will be very difficult to differentiate with their shadows looking right next to each other. And so the idea with CT imaging, you'll be able to differentiate those two different densities that are next to each other. So delving into the historical context of conventional radiography, once people had started to develop the technology, get used to it, the holy grail, so to speak, was to uh, try to image the brain. There are some inherent problems with imaging the brain using conventional radiography. Firstly, there's the bony density of the skull that attenuates many of the x-rays that go through it. And secondly, the brain itself, which is made up of soft tissue and a lot of water, is bathed in cerebrospinal fluid, which is water itself. So those two different densities on conventional radiography look identical, and so you will not be able to differentiate them apart. Enter this gentleman in this photo over here, Mr. Hounsfield, who in fact shared the 1979 Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine for the discovery of uh, CT imaging. And by trade, he was an electrical engineer. He worked at EMI in the 1950s, and he helped develop the first business computer in Great Britain. And once he helped develop the computer, he was given a sabbatical to investigate potentially new applications for this product. Lucky for the world and medicine, he had some interest in imaging and focused his research on that. And as a side, EMI also happened to be a music label, which was the first music label for the British rock and roll band, The Beatles who you may have heard of. And it turns out that because the Beatles did so well, they made a lot of money for EMI and they were able to use that money in order to fund Hounsfield's research and in some sense help us discover CT imaging. And so eventually, this is the kind of concept that he came up with and it's since been modified and we've come a long way since what his initial observations were. The idea here is that you have an x-ray source which is similar to what we spoke about for conventional radiography. It's placed in one end of a large circle as you can see over here. On the other hand there are a row of detectors. And this x-ray source, when switched on, will release some x-rays that are then detected by these detectors. And for every slice that it goes through, there is data regarding density values that they see on the other side that are fed into a computer. And utilizing a mathematical technique called filtered back projection, you can post-process this and assign specific density values with different shades of gray going from black to white. And those shades of gray can then be projected onto a computer screen and then make up the image of that particular slice. And so this is what it kind of looks like in practice. You can see here the x-ray generator is beaming some x-rays, there's detectors on the other side, and the patient is moved through this x-ray generator as the generator itself and the detectors slice through the patient's abdomen, getting information about the patient's densities at all these different levels, feeding that into a computer. This is what an x-ray machine looks like. Obviously it's been unearthed a little bit, to see the insides of it and you can see it actually goes very very quick and so you can get you know CT imaging done from the head to the toe in uh, you know 30 to 40 seconds initially when this was first released you know every image that they would take every slice would be around 20 minutes each and so if we orient ourselves to CT images we can look at the CT images number one and number two try to look at the following questions see if you can answer for them for yourselves which patient is lying supine which patient is lying prone how can you tell what's the right side of the patient what's the left side of the patient if we go to the next slide, we can see that patient number one is lying supine. This is the CT gantry. This is the table. Patient's back is lying on that table. Patient two is lying prone. This is the patient's front lying prone on the same table. 
a convention, right is going to be this side over here, left is going to be this side of the hair, and this won't change when the patient is lying prone as well, right side here and left side over here. If you look at these two CT scans, one of these patients was given intravenous contrast and one was not. So this one was without intravenous contrast, this one was with intravenous contrast. This is the aorta in the mid portion of this image over here. You can see the same aorta in a different patient over here. If you look at the inside of the aorta, it looks exactly like the liver or the spleen or the muscles here, that shade of gray. When we give contrast, that contrast appears very bright on CT imaging, so it appears very white. In addition, in number two, additional route of contrast was given. See if you can pick that out. And this was oral contrast, which appears bright and is seen within the portions of the patient's bowel over here. So the Hounsville unit, this is an important concept, is a value used to measure density on CT scan. That's a unit of radio density. And so when this was assigned by uh, Hounsfield in his original work, he arbitrarily said that water will have a Hounsfield unit of zero and air will have a Hounsfield unit of minus 1,000. And all the different densities in between will have different Hounsfield units. And so if you look at this table, we can see water at zero, air at minus 1,000. On the far other side of it will be bone, which is, goes up to about 1,000. Fat will be from minus 60 to minus 100. Lung will be from minus 400 to minus 600. Soft tissue and blood will be from 40 to 80. And important concept to get from here is that the higher the Hounsfield unit, the brighter it will appear on CT imaging. Bones will be white, soft tissues will be gray, water will be a little bit less gray, fat will be dark, and air will be absolutely black. And so let's see how we can use this practically. Here we have a CT scan. The patient's lying on their back. This is the gantry. That's the right side. That's the left side. We can see the aorta is a shade of gray over here. So this is a non-contrast study. We've given oral contrast, which is why the stomach contains bright material. And what we can actually do on CT imaging is measure little circles around different objects. And if we do that, we can see that things that contain fat, for example, the patient's subcutaneous fat has a Hounsfield unit of minus 83, if you round that up. And so that's consistent with fat. Air, which is contained in the stomach over here, which looks black, visually has a Hounsfield unit of minus 934. Water, as can be seen in this simple cyst, has a Hounsfield unit of 8 while blood has a Hounsfield unit closer to 50. Bone, as you can see over here, is a Hounsfield unit of 277. So this is how we use Hounsfield units in order for us to recognize what the contents of the structure contain. Now here's another concept that's important to appreciate, and that's the concept of window width and window level. And we can change these values in order to adjust the contrast levels, and this allows us to see different types of densities a little bit better. Now the window width is the range of Hounsfield units that can be displayed on any CT scan. So if it goes from minus 1,000 to positive 1,000, we can display around 2,000 Hounsfield units, or values of radio density, on any CT scan. The problem is that the human eye is very limited in its ability to differentiate all those different shades of gray. And we can probably only differentiate about 16 shades of gray. And so the wider that window level is, if you divide that by 16, it tells you that you can only really differentiate very few different types of radio densities on that particular image. The narrower the window width is, for example, if you adjust it so that you say, okay, I only want to see a range of 500 Hounsfield units, say from minus 100 to positive 400, you divide that by 16, now, all of a sudden, you can showcase those Hounsfield units over much more different shades of gray. The window level, on the other hand, is the central number across that window width. So if we have a window width going from minus 1,000 to 1,000, over 2,000 Hounsfield units, our window level will be set at zero. If it goes from minus 100 to 400, the window level will be at 150. And so if you adjust the window width and level, and these are preset on CT scan machines when you view them on your um, image viewer. The abdomen will look like this. If you want to look at the bones, you can set it so you can see the detail of the bones. If you use the same window width and level to look at the lungs, you'll see the lungs appear very black, but if you adjust it to look at the lungs properly, you can see much more detail and the internal architecture of the lungs is much better seen. So how can, again, we use this practically if you have a CT scan here, patients lying on their back, this is the right side, this is the left side, this is a non-contrast CT. We see a large structure here that shouldn't be there, and if we were to figure out what that is, we can look at it and say, okay, it looks rather bright, but we've given no contrast over here. We can throw a Hounsfield unit on it, and the Hounsfield comes back as 50, and that allows us to understand this probably is a blood product and a big hematoma. So in summary, Remember the orientation for CT scans, what's anterior, what's posterior, what's left and what's right. Recognize what contrast versus non-contrast images are. Look at the aorta, look at the bowel to see if they're bright in contrast enhanced images. And understand this Hounsfield unit, which is a unit of radio density. It allows us to figure out contents of any particular structure on the CT scan.